Hi, I'm Tony Guerra. I teach college pharmacology and I created the free pharmacology course podcast to help you recognize, understand, and memorize pharmacology and drug names on the go. This first seven lecture series provides a basic understanding of how to recognize common drug names, understand the basic classifications, and quickly memorize them for exams. The print ebook and audio books these lectures are based on, Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach, can be found in the show notes taking you to audible.com. If you've never had a book from Audible, you may be able to get the seven hour professional narrated version for free. Please do take the time to subscribe, rate, and review these episodes. It helps other people find out about them. Welcome to episode one, Gastrointestinal Pharmacology. What I want to do is I want to go through the seven chapters and I'm going to go through them on the board from memory. As we get to the later chapters, I might just do them ahead of time uh, just to make the clips shorter. Uh, but for these first two clips at least, uh, I'm going to do it from memory just to show you that uh, hopefully after you've read the book, you've got it to the point where uh, you're at the instructor's level. As an instructor, uh, with those 200 drugs, I see them all as seven pictures. Uh, I don't need 200 note cards. I can just do it from memory. And that's where I want you to get to. So we'll start with chapter one, gastrointestinal. And we'll talk about 13 medications. And while I talk about the 13 medications, I'll also talk about grouping them. Uh, and grouping them, when you're first learning these top 200 drugs, when you group them, um, students are good at grouping them as, okay, these are for analgesics, and uh, these are um, maybe for some kind of stomach upset, and then these are for pain. But this is another level where we're connecting all 200 drugs in one uh, order. So let's start with two drugs that you're probably very familiar with, two antacids. Okay. And then from the antacids, we're going to go to the H2 blockers. And these are better known as histamine 2 receptor antagonists. So there is a histamine 1, that's the antihistamine you think of when you think of Claritin and things like that. Uh, the receptor just means that the drug is going to affect the receptor and an antagonist means it blocks it. So histamine 2 must release gas, uh, gastric acid uh, if we're using a drug to block it. And then proton pump inhibitors. So within each of these categories I'm going to alphabetize them uh, because it makes it easier to remember. Okay? Although magnesium is above calcium on the periodic table, uh, we're going to put calcium carbonate first. Okay. Okay. So calcium carbonate is Tums, but I also want you to know that it's something called children's Pepto. This is important because regular Pepto has a salicylate component that's a lot like aspirin and uh, that can be very dangerous in children, especially if the child has uh, some kind of chicken pox or fever and things like that. You can get Reyes syndrome, spelled R-E-Y-E apostrophe S. There's magnesium hydroxide. And that's milk of magnesia. Um, so these antacids, they work very quickly, uh, and because they work quickly, what we're going to do for the way that we're going to remember them is these work in a couple minutes, maybe five minutes. These work in about 30 minutes, the H2 blockers, and then these work in about a day. Okay. Um, but antacids are probably the first thing you'll reach for because they work so quickly. Then if it persists, you might go to an H2 blocker. And we have two that we're going to use, famotidine and ranitidine. I'm not going to put the brand names yet because I want you to notice that there's a tidine ending, T-I-D-I-N-E. The first thing I want you to know is that the ene, I-N-E, is not the ending. Um, a lot of the videos on YouTube show that as the ending just because 20% of all drugs end in ene. So you don't want to classify it by that. The T-I-D-I-N-E has been set by 
a couple of organizations, the World Health Organization, uh, the United States Adopted Names Council, and they're the ones that make this into a group. So that it's a tadine makes it a cimetidine like H2 blocker, and cimetidine was the first H2 blocker that came out. Okay. So let's put the brand names in there. Pepsid, which combines peptic and acid, Zantac, you can kind of see the word antagonist in there for acid. Okay. And then two proton pump inhibitors. And we're going to see similar ending, or that they're going to have similar endings. And then I'm going to introduce something new as well there. So S omeprazole. There's Nexium. Omeprazole. It's Prilosec. So the prazole ending is what lets us know it's a proton pump inhibitor. But you'll notice we have omeprazole and omeprazole. What's the S? What's this doing? If you look in, and Wiki is a good place to look because it has good pictures of molecules. This omeprazole is actually an R plus S, where this omeprazole is just an S. What does that mean? There's a left-handed, or there's a right-handed rectus, and left-handed sinister omeprazole. So it's a mixed, um, there's, there's two sides to the molecule, and only the S does anything. So Prilosec came first, protons, low secretion is how you remember the brand name, and then esomeprazole or Nexium came next, and you can remember that from Nexium. Okay. Uh, but just notice that these have the same root, okay. but they still have this ending, prazole. Be careful, some of those YouTube videos call it azole, and those are maybe people that haven't had organic chemistry. An azole is just an organic chemistry compound. But prazole uh, is an actual stem uh, by the uh, United States Adopted Names Council. So let's look at our first six drugs in order. We start with antacids, okay. calcium carbonate, and magnesium hydroxide alphabetized, although on the periodic table I know magnesium comes first, it's 12. Calcium carbonate is 20. H2 blockers, alphabetize them. Famotidine, ranitidine, notice the tadine stem, the T-I-D-I-N-E, and then the proton pump inhibitors, esomeprazole, omeprazole. Although omeprazole came first, uh, esomeprazole should be alphabetized before omeprazole, uh, and this S uh, means that it's uh, the S isomer, and um, that's supposed to work a little bit better. All right, well, let's move on to the next group. So after you have a stomach ache, sometimes you get diarrhea, so let's look at some drugs for that. Okay, so the, we're going to do again two antidiarrheals, and then what we want to do is we want to do the opposite. So we'll do two laxatives. Okay. And so the antidiarrheals, we'll start with, and again alphabetical order, Bismuth, subsalicylate, that's a P, pepto, bismol, okay, and loperamide, okay, that's emodium. So the sal is the stem, S-A-L, okay. and uh, the way to remember this is bismuth subsalicylate, it's this big pink bottle, uh, many people know about it, but just recognize that bismuth subsalicylate peptobismol is different than peptochildren's. Low paramide, you see low for slow and pair for peristalsis, so slowing peristalsis or making emodium, emodium looks a little like immobilized, so we're slowing things down uh, if a patient has diarrhea. Now again, we don't use those drugs if the patient has some kind of infection. Uh, we'll treat that with antibiotics. But let's go to the opposite. Let's go to the laxatives on what we can use. Okay. Start with docusate. And you can see it's docusate or docusate sodium. That's colase. And then we'll also see polyethylene glycol. Okay. 
and that's Miralax. Okay? So the polyethylene glycol sort of has a stem. The P, the E, and the G tells you that it's pegylated. But uh, docusate stodium, I know I have it under laxative. It's really a stool softener. But think of the word docusate and penetrate as rhyming. And then polyethylene glycol, um, this is the miracle laxative is a way you can remember it. Uh, but also um, colase, um, allowing the colon to race now, uh, giving a laxative. Okay. So we've gone from the stomach now to the intestines. And these have all been over the counter. So let me put that in front of these, OTC, OTC. And what we want to do is we, again, want to have a logical order of the thing. So we're going to go from OTC to RX. And the RX drugs we'll look at are the antiemetics. Antiemetics are those drugs that help with nausea and vomiting. And a very important drug that came out is called ondansetron. Okay. Ondansetron is Zofran. And it has the citron uh, stem. Uh, you'll see another uh, couple of medications that uh, have the citron stem. And then we're going to use promethazine. Which is phenergan. Okay. I'm also going to put something here next to the Zofran, an ODT. Zofran comes as an orally disintegrating tablet because sometimes if somebody's vomiting, even just taking a little bit of water would make them vomit again. So the orally disintegrating tablet allows it to just dissolve. Uh, the phenergan comes as a rectal suppository. Again, because the patient uh, is vomiting, uh, they would lose the medication if they took it as a pill. Uh, it's another form. Okay. So what we've done is we've gone from the stomach down to the intestines, back up to the mouth, if you want to put it that way. And then we're going to go uh, back to the intestines. There's two ways that I, I look at it. You're already there if you're thinking of the rectal suppository promethazine. And so the last one we're going to do is something for ulcerative colitis. And this drug is infliximab. And that's Remicade, remission aid. So sometimes ulcerative colitis can go into remission, uh, and that's how you remember it. This has one of the most complex stems. It's a monoclonal antibody, so MAB for MAB, monoclonal antibody. The LI and XI uh, both have meaning, and I go over into detail in, uh, in the book, uh, but just since we're just reviewing. But the Lixamab is actually the stem. Um, and the monoclonal antibody doesn't tell you anything really about what it does. It just tells you it's a monoclonal antibody. The LI and the XI are much more useful uh, because we're going to see in later chapters uh, things like Zolaire um, and uh, Etanercept and other biologics uh, that have these complicated stems. Okay? But again, uh, if you're going to try to memorize it, you really want to memorize the GI drugs where they're working. Okay? So we went to the intestines. Um, down to the rectum with this promethazine, uh, and then ulcerative colitis, uh, we would give uh, some kind of injection of uh, Remicade. Uh, but that's um, the ulcers and the inflammation are there in the intestines. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook.